Good afternoon. I am so glad to welcome you to this time of all age prayer and worship. In a moment's time, I will disappear and along with you enjoy being led through this time by Dan, Mary, Jude and Debbie. Um, just as you uh, prepare for this time, you might want to uh, get ready a wee bowl, to a wee hand washing bowl, um, some tissues if you have some, some pens, um, some hand sanitizer if you have them. We don't have hand sanitizer, so some wipes would be fine. Um, if you get a daily newspaper, you might want to have, well, you will want to have that in front of you. Um, and if not, perhaps the tablet or whatever you read the news on. And, uh, and uh, if you have one, a, an atlas or something like that, or a map of the world, um, all will become clear as these four much loved uh, parts of the Southside family lead us through this time of all age uh, prayer and worship. And as they, uh, as they do that, let me uh, just share a short word of prayer as we begin. Father, we thank you that we are part of a family. We are part of a family locally. We are part of a family in the world. And we ask, Lord God, that now as we pray, uh, you would bring to mind things uh, both locally and globally. We ask that as we pray, we would know your spirit leading us. We ask that as we worship, we would be in song. We would be united together and with the saints around the throne who worship you all the time, God. And as we continue this journey through Holy Week, may our focus be on Jesus. May our eyes be on you, God. And Holy Spirit, would you continue to teach us what it is to be faithful disciples. Amen. So be blessed, be encouraged, be challenged. Let's be worshippers and prayers through this season.
we're going to pray now doing something that we will have done countless times over the last few weeks and as we pray we're going to take a bowl of water and we're going to take our soap and as we wash our hands we're going to pray for the containment of this virus we're going to pray that God would intervene in this situation that this virus would slow down the number of cases would level out that this virus would not spread in the way that's predicted let's pray take some time now to pray for our NHS staff. Their courage, their bravery, their professionalism is just amazing in these days. And we thank God for them. We thank God for these people who are prepared to do what they are doing for the sake of our health and for the sake of this nation. And to do that, I'm just going to take a few drops of this hand sanitizer which protects my hands from the germs. And as I do that, I'm going to pray God's protection over them. We pray that he will give them courage, he will give them strength, he will again make his presence known to them. And just take a minute or two and, and pray for those that you know personally. They might be family members, they might be church family members and if you don't know anybody then pray for the amazing job that they are doing at this time.
many of us will already know people who are self-isolating either because they have symptoms of the virus or because they've perhaps already been tested positive for COVID-19. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a tissue and on that tissue we're going to write their names. And as you write the names of people you know in that situation, we're going to pray that in the midst of their self-isolation, they'll know that they are not alone. They have a God who loves them, who wants the very best for them, who will be with them during this time, who will make his presence felt in the midst of their solitude. He will make his presence manifestly felt to them. That they'll know his protection and they'll know his strength and his peace and his healing. then first of all that petitions, prayers, intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Saviour who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So we're going to do that just now, we're going to pray for our leaders, we're going to pray for our Westminster leaders, as this was being recorded, the news had just come through that Boris Johnson had been admitted to intensive care. So we pray particularly for him just now, for his health, for his healing. We pray for our leaders up here in Scotland, in Holyrood. We pray for all of the leaders just now who are making really tough decisions and working incredibly long hours and incredibly hard. So we pray for them as God instructs us to do. And we're going to do this in, in three ways. I'm going to invite you to put your hands on top of your head and we're going to do that to signify that we're asking God to give them wisdom at this time. And then we're going to put our hands behind our ears to indicate that we're asking God that we would listen to advisors, that he would send them wise advisors and that we would listen to that advice and take it on board. And then we're going to open our hands out and ask God to give them the ability to communicate clearly with the people.
Theologian Karl Barth's advice to preachers was take your Bible in one hand and your newspaper in the other. And it's good advice to us all, not just to preachers, particularly at times like this. Like many of you, my newspaper comes to me online. But as I scan the headlines today, I see story upon story of courage, of bravery, of sacrifice. I see stories of nations helping nations. I see just incredibly uplifting stories. But I also see stories of selfishness, of greed, of lack of thought for others, of lack of empathy, of downright dangerous behaviour. So let's take some time just now and let's look at our newspaper, whatever form that takes, and let's pray into the news. Let's just not read the news, but let's pray into it. Let's see what's happening through God's eyes and pray into some of the situations that are going on right now. Let's pray.
so far our, our focus really has been on our families, on our community, on our own nation, and that's right and proper. But we want to also be remembering and praying for this worldwide pandemic and the effect that it's having on many countries throughout the world. In many of these nations, their experience will be very, very different to ours. From the townships of South Africa, in the slums of India, in the refugee camps throughout the world, the idea of regularly washing your hands every two hours is just not feasible. In places where families of eight to ten people live in one room, or one tent, or one cardboard shelter, there's no possibility of self-isolation. And really, our hearts cry out for these people. Because in human terms, we can do nothing. But we can pray. And we keep praying. So right now, we're just going to spend some time. Some of you will be in touch with various international organisations. So we pray for the aid workers who are having to be protected and throughout all this. We pray for situations like hearing about people in India perhaps climbing trees as a way of, of isolating and we just cry out to God for them. Let's do that just now.
so as we journey through Holy Week this week, together, but apart, it's clearly a very different Holy Week to anything that any of us will ever have experienced before. And no matter what our family situation is, we will be experiencing some loneliness, there's separation, there's a sense of loss. But as believers, we know that we journey through this week with one who has gone before us. And he's gone before us to prepare a place for us. And we know that we journey through this week with one who also experienced loneliness and separation and loss. One who's promised to never leave us or forsake us. Pete Gregg of 24-7 Prayer prayed yesterday as part of the Lectio 365 devotion. Lord Jesus, my heart is heavy as I join you in your journey to the cross. Gethsemane has come to our hospitals. Golgotha casts its shadow across our land. Lead me through the darkness of these days to the light and the life of Easter once again.